Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Good Morning Cannabis. I have a good friend, a new friend of mine, David Feldman, who um, has something that I think you folks are going to want to listen to with some ideas about legalization of cannabis. But before we go into that, David, can you kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, your pedigree, where you've been, what you're doing, and a little bit how you got into cannabis, and then we'll go right into your topic. Sure. And thanks so much for having me. I really do appreciate uh, being on. I am a 30 plus year corporate securities lawyer, worked in the small and micro cap space for many years, became known in something called reverse mergers and alternatives to traditional ways of taking companies public, wrote my first few books on that, then a book on entrepreneurship, uh, and most recently a book on something called Regulation A+, which is a streamlined, simplified way to do an IPO. Uh, I fell into cannabis in the early 2010s because the first companies that went public in the space uh, did so through these reverse mergers. So I inherited a few of these companies, started attending conferences and doing speaking gigs, started realizing the exciting opportunity. And then around 2015, I joined a very large firm uh, called Dwayne Morris, where I helped build their cannabis practice from zero to a very large group of, uh, where I was co-lead of a 60 lawyer cannabis industry focused group for a number of years. Left there two and a half years ago to start my own business consulting firm in addition to a, an affiliated law firm uh, that works with Skip Intro, which is our uh, cannabis and psychedelics, business consulting, mergers and acquisitions, finance uh, advisory firm. Cool. So David, last time we spoke, you had a very interesting thought that I wanted to actually get you on the show to talk about because everyone talks about the battle to legalize cannabis. And I mean, I think that as of today, I mean, today's recording, it was Maryland and Missouri said yes after the elections, uh, but you had South Dakota, North Dakota, and Arkansas that said no. But uh, yep, so there were, we'll go back again, I hope. But I think that you had some ideas I want you to share with everyone on the show on uh, how we might be able to overcome this challenge of legalization. So the floor is all yours, my friend. Well, sure. And to some extent, the uh, announcement by the president to move towards D or rescheduling cannabis, uh, which is a significant potential uh, change in the regulatory oversight, may cause this to happen indirectly. But the basic idea was this. Uh, when people talk about federal legalization of cannabis, there's really only two camps. One camp talks about full, complete legalization of adult use, you know, through and through, that's the Schumer bill and so on, the Moore Act, all these bills basically focus on full legalization. The other camp says the only other way to do this is piecemeal, where we do first a bill on banking, then a bill to help veterans, then a bill for research. And eventually we get there with a whole series of kind of steps. And I looked at it and I said, you know, I, I'm a very focused on the global scene in cannabis, which is very right. exciting and emerging. And there's over 40 countries that have already federally legalized medical marijuana in their country. We haven't even done that. So 40 countries have, have federally legal sales of product. We don't. And I've always wondered, and I've started to talk to some of the legislative folks that I know and say, why don't we look at doing that? just federally legalized medical marijuana. Every poll recently in the last five, six years says over 90% of Americans favor legalizing medical marijuana. Um, it is uh, supported in a bipartisan way. 39 states yeah. have approved medical marijuana, including many red states. It's just not a controversial thing. Uh, and what it could do dramatically is eliminate the tax discrimination under 280E, get right. trademarks for these companies, be able to have an import export market, be able to have an interstate market. The big multi-state operators that have both medical and adult use could split their operations into two. And the medical side could then move to a higher stock exchange. Right now, NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange don't allow right. these brand touching companies on. So I feel this could be a really smart direction. And the truth is, even the Schumer bill talking about federally, legal, federally legalizing adult use has a problem, which is we have treaty obligations in the United States oh, that's a good point. that um, technically would prohibit uh, the legalization of adult use without either a change in the treaty 
or certain workarounds that are very complicated. And when you ask people from other countries that have legalized adult use like Canada, and you say to them, how did you guys do it? They usually answer, we just ignored the treaty obligations. <laughs> and, and maybe Canada can do that, but the United States really can't. That said, the treaty obligations would not be violated if we legalize just medical cannabis. The therapeutic use is not prohibited by the treaties. So that's another reason that this could be a really smart incremental step for uh, our country to consider as we move towards a, a bigger global market. I think that's a really good thought. I mean, can you see any downside to that, David? I mean, does that sure. mean that the FDA gets involved in everything and shuts everything down? Or I mean, what 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 could you see as maybe some of the, the downside to making it legal for medical purposes alone? Well, whenever we talk about any form of federal legalization, I always say to clients that I'm talking to, be careful what you wish for, because right. the the lack of any federal regulation because it's illegal makes life actually a bit simpler for operators right. because they only have to worry about state regulation. There's no question that whatever we do to legalize at the federal level is going to create a regulatory structure that's going to have to be complied with. And the FDA will be involved, uh, the, you know, the, the taxation authorities, and you know, even the Schumer bill has an alphabet soup of different government agencies that are going to be regulating cannabis. And there's no question that will be the case here as well. With medical, they'll still be require a doctor's prescription and so on. They'll have to figure out what ailments uh, would trigger your right to get a medical cannabis uh, card and so on. But they do that in all these other countries and they figure it out. So, you know, I, the other downside is, you know, people who are against it within the industry would say, if we legalize just medical, they'll never get to adult use. And we don't want that to happen. And I disagree. You, you would argue that at the state level, too. But every state starts with medical and then they realize the world doesn't implode just because people are allowed to smoke pot. And then they move towards adult use. The, what's interesting, though, is that Biden's proposal could lead to a rescheduling of cannabis, yeah. which might make it, say, Schedule 3 instead of Schedule 1. If it does, there are a lot of benefits, no more 280E and so on. But that may lead to essentially what I'm talking about, which is kind of the legalization of therapeutic and medical use, because in Schedule 3, you would still need a doctor's prescription. And so that could be indirectly uh, a way that we're going to get legalization of medical uh, at the federal level. What's interesting, David, is I've spoken to different um, folks or advocates for, for the medical side, and they always seem to... Well, some some have said that, and I think it's true that the folks who are for uh, adult use sometimes are putting some hampers on those who have it for medical use. Do you, do you see that? I mean, do you agree? Um, in other words, because the, of the pressure from the adult side, they're keeping medical patients from um, having the freedom to get the the uh, medical marijuana. I don't know about that. I, th I think what we, I think we find, for example, we do work in the psychedelic space as well. Right. In psychedelics, it's really all about, or 90% about the therapeutic use. Whereas in cannabis, it's very much about both. And there right. are people who think it's important uh, to be available for therapeutic benefit. And there are people that feel it's important for recreational use as well, uh, because the, the risks and so on are, are so low. And so I don't perceive that the movement towards adult use stands in the way of medical use. Um, but there are some who feel that if we just legalize medical, that they, they tr can be against that because they feel the only way to legalize is all the way. Do you know any group politician who's taking up that cause of legalizing just for medical purpose? Or is this kind of, um, I mean, what's your thoughts? Uh, it's been me on a soapbox for the last three to six months and talking to advocates, talking to other people. Uh, I'm not a lobbyist. I'm not, you know, an active advocate for these things. I'm just out there saying this to people and hoping somebody pays attention because it could be a solution uh, that would not be controversial uh, among the public, among legislators, among what the courts would look at and so on. Very interesting. Well, so 
that, that thank you that was very helpful that you shared what i thought you would and that's that's great so i'd love to get some feedback from people who are listening to this and watching but so how can folks get in touch with you where can they find you sure so our consulting business is called skip intro advisors uh, my email is dfeldman at skipintroadvisors.com. Uh, and you can find me there on Instagram. I'm David Feldman 1000. Um, I, you know, I'm everywhere. LinkedIn, uh, you name it, you can find me there. Well, thank you so much, David, for being on the show. And uh, we should talk a little bit further how we can join some forces to get this message out. I think it is a, a good uh, idea that should be vetted. That's Let's do it. Okay, you got it. Thanks, um, Thanks, have a great have a great morning. Take you care. Bye-bye.